We're now recording. Yeah. Uh, so what I remember about uh, last time was that basically the presentation about Graal was supposed to last just 20 minutes. And then the idea was to focus on um, uh, the other part that start, we started with uh, Georg, so to uh, create a dashboard with the data about uh, uh, weekdays and, and hours of the commit. But then the presentation of Graal uh, took basically all the, uh, all the hour. And uh, I think the idea was to, um, uh, was to play the dashboard today. But since uh, Herf is not there, maybe we can postpone it to the next time and uh, decide to focus on um, other things. I don't know, whatever uh, uh, you may find uh, interesting, like how to use Percival or... Uh, uh... Yes, I sent an email yesterday and I wrote some ideas uh, we had about topics that we could cover today. One of them was uh, the the dashboard for for the idea Georg uh, explained some weeks ago about how to analyze the day of the week and the, the time of the day in which the contributions were made. But as Valerio said, uh, we were talking yesterday that probably uh, it is worth to wait for Georg to be here as he was the one requesting this probably he's interested in being here and the, the other three things I I thought of uh, was uh, were Percival as Valerio said Valerio could introduce us to Percival installation and so as how to use Percival from the command line and from Python and so on. We also thought that another option could be trying to set up a development environment to start working on Grimoire Lab projects. So we could solve how to clone the repositories, how to configure an environment like PyCharm or some other and let you know the first step to start developing things with the projects in Grimoire Lab. And the last idea I had was uh, uh, from an issue we have in, in Seagulls, and it's related to the demographics panel we have. Because in the demographics panel, we are showing people living in the community, taking into account they are not doing any contribution in the last or during the last six months but well the question was maybe six months is too much or maybe uh, it's not enough so it would be great to be able to configure that period of time but in kibana that's not uh, an easy thing you can do it but you but you need to modify the visualization and that's not the ideal situation because the, the situations you want to have there is you have the visualization and then changing some configuration in the dashboard you get the data you want so another idea could be trying to explore how to build a different panel focused on people living in the community and trying to achieve this that is when you modify a time picker this date you have in the top right corner then the data gets modified and you get the information you, you want. Uh, in this case, is uh, having those people that left the community in, uh, during the time range you are uh, setting up in the top right corner. But well, uh, these are uh, only ideas. So if you have any other suggestions, we could do another different thing. But if you like any of of those, we can proceed and start working on it right now. So I don't know. No. Alberto, um, I like the idea of installing the development environment and running it with the CLI or running Percival jobs. So that's my vote. Okay, any other vote? 
Yeah, I'm completely fine with either of those. I mean, any any way that I can see under the hood of how Grimoire Lab works, I think is a positive for me. Okay, so we have two votes for these and <laughs> anyone else? Okay, we have three, so with my yeah, vote I'm for... Fine. Idea quiet. Perfect. So uh, maybe Valerio, you can start with this. I can help you if you want. Uh, okay, uh, sure. Uh, so I start with personal or uh, we start with uh, the development environment? Well, what do you prefer? So uh, I try to share my screen, let's see. I'd say whatever you think it's easier to start with. Uh, okay, well, once I'm done. Maybe you could start uh, by cloning Perceval repository and then configure the environment to use Perceval from the environment or something like that. So it's yeah. a first step to contribute or to develop things in, in Grimoire Lab because it's the, the lower end of, of the tool chain. Uh, yes, so one second, because I don't find the button to share the screen. So, uh, I'm a bit lost. It's so, the, okay. the green one you have yes, yes, at I the bottom. There. Okay, sorry. Okay. So, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, Okay, so we can start with uh, with Perceval. Uh, so Perceval is pretty easy to to install. Uh, what uh, we are going to do is to create a, a virtual environment in Python. Uh, so uh, okay, with this command we created a virtual environment. Then we have to activate it. So we do uh, okay, so now we are in, in inside the virtual environment and we're going to install Perceval. So, can you make the font a little bit bigger just for recording purposes? Ah, yeah, okay. It's okay. Okay, maybe I, wait, I, I can try. Uh, okay, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> That's con command oh. plus or control plus. There you go. Yes. There we go. Okay, like this is okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, yes. Okay, so now uh, we do pp install Perceval. Should be fast. Okay. So now if we do uh, Percival, so 
So here we have like uh, a summary of uh, all backgrounds uh, that are currently supported by Perchival. Uh, and uh, for instance, we can focus on uh, on Git, that is uh, uh, the one of the most used. So we can go, we can do Perchival Git, and then again again uh, uh, minus minus L. And here uh, we have. Uh, uh, information about how to uh, about the parameters that we should use to run uh, search one. So uh, we can say uh, we can see the category. So in, in search one, we have uh, for each backend we can have different categories. So the idea is that search one extracts uh, a set of, of homogeneous items from uh, a data source. So in the case of uh, Git, we have uh, commits. But if we if we focus on uh, GitHub, we can have pull request and issues. Uh, so in this case, uh, the category uh, is uh, is commit and uh, uh, is by default is commit. So we don't have to, to set the category. Uh, we can just do the uh, Percival it, and uh, then what we need is uh, the uh, the URL of the repository. So in this case, we can do. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, okay, this one is pretty uh, uh, small. Okay, and then we just uh, clone. I mean, and here what we have is uh, so all the documents are uh, are sent to the to the terminal. So here, for instance, we can see the result of I an mean, objection that is uh, uh, produced by Versual. Here we have the backend name. The version of the backend that, that produces that item, the category commit. So this is a, a field that is used to uh, to filter uh, specific uh, attributes that contain uh, private information. So in this case, for Git, uh, there are no fields, but for Meetup, we have something uh, uh, implemented. So then uh, here we have the the attribute data, and inside this attribute we find. Uh, all the information that comes from the data source. So in this case, we can see that the author is, is Santiago, and then we have the author date, uh, same, same thing for commit and commit date. And then for instance, we have the list of files that have changed. So we have like uh, information about this file and uh, I mean, all the files that were in the commit. And then we have the message and we have the parents. In this case, we can see that uh, this commit is unmerged because uh, he has two parents. And then uh, again, here we have uh, uh, other information that uh, are specific of Percival. So we have the origin, so from where the data was extracted. Uh, then we have the Percival version. Uh, this is uh, uh, the search field, this is an attribute that has been added uh, recently. The idea is, uh, um, is to simplify uh, the way of searching uh, items once they are stored in Elasticsearch. So instead of going inside the, the, the item and maybe looking for a, a specific uh, hash, what we do, uh, we, exp we expose uh, certain information uh, at the very top level. So then uh, the, the search is, uh, is simplified. Uh, then we have the tag. So the tag is, uh, is an attribute used to just uh, mark the, the items. By default, uh, we keep, we use like, uh, if the tag is not defined, it just uh, contains the same information of origin. So we have the timestamp, that is uh, the date when, uh, I mean, the timestamp when the data was uh, retrieved. And then we have the updated term. And this is basically comes from the data source. So in this case, we know when the commit was committed. This value is uh, equivalent to uh, the outer date in here. Uh, so what we're looking at here is, is, is you populating Percival? Is that what's happening here? Uh, no, actually, um, it, we, are, we are not populating Percival. Percival is a component that is just uh, uh, retrieving data. So you call yes. Percival, and the output is a list of JSON. Then you do whatever you want with the JSON. OK, so this is just the JSON that's, that could be put into Elasticsearch. Exactly, yes. Okay. So th this information you see there is, is what uh, we call uh, raw data, because uh, basically one-to-one -one correspondence with the upstream uh, server. So this data is exactly what we take from, uh, 
from from the origin. Is this data ever used without populating, without being put into Elasticsearch? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the question. I lost. Well, is there is there a reason to just keep it in a JSON format? Um, so. I would assume the next step is to take this and put it into the Elasticsearch data. Uh, yes, I mean, the, the, the JSON format is just because uh, uh, it's a standard format that can be used, uh, can be accepted by many applications. For instance, if you want to use Perceval, but then you don't want to put the data in, uh, in Elasticsearch, you. you can then okay. use, like, for instance, create a web page with this data and uh, uh, just using the format. and. Uh, uh, with respect to Elasticsearch, okay. this is the, so our documents and Elasticsearch accept this kind of documents. Um, okay, then uh, last, last thing about the data, so, uh, Valeria, first of all, Valeria, Sorry, sorry Valeria. Yes. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if Matt heard all your explanation. Ah, wasn't, wasn't clear or I was... No, because it, it seems he had some, some connections, some ah. issues, issues oh. with the connection. Ah, sorry. Uh, Matt? Oh. I hear you. I heard, I got it. Oh, okay. okay. Perfect. Sorry. Thank uh, you. I didn't notice this. Um, okay. The, so the, 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 sorry, Valeria. The main idea when, when, when the guys decided to create Perceval was, was to create a, a standalone component. So we, we can play with it and, 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 and we can be independent from the, from the elastic stack. So if we decide to move to another stack, we can, we can do it because Perceval is, is agnostic in, in, in this way. Okay, that's good, thank you. Um, okay, so then the last uh, thing to comment about the data, I mean, the, the output of Perceval is uh, the summary. So once uh, uh, Perceval has finished uh, his job to retrieve data from a, a repository, he produces like a summary. Also this, um, what you see here is, um, something that was recently added to, to Perceval. So here we have like, uh, we know that we collected uh, 52 uh, items. No, uh, no item uh, was skipped. The last item we ID uh, is this one. And then we have the last item date and, uh, and uh, also like uh, the date of the first and the map and last item more or less. So uh, I think uh, I forgot is uh, to talk about the UID. So this is uh, the way we use to identify a, a, a document uh, in Grimoire Lab. So this uh, uh, UID is generated generally by uh, mixing the origin plus um, the identifier of, of the item. In this case, is the hash. Uh, so we take this information plus uh, plus this one, plus the origin, and uh, we create an hash. And so in this way, we are able to track this item uh, across the platform. So in the raw data, we will find exactly this information. And in the rich data, we have always a, a link to this, uh, 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 to this UID. So we are able to trace uh, uh, the items inside the platform. Uh, Okay, if you want, we can, uh, we can, yes. You know, there are some questions I think that people have. There, I think Manrique has one and Andy has seven. <laughs> ah, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, maybe I should like, uh, uh, okay, yes. I can, uh, I can ask if, I think we can make it fast if we ask then here and then. Yeah, sorry, because I wasn't uh, checking the, the chat, sorry. So basically, my, my question is about the filter uh, fields. So basically, those are fields that are indicated in the call to Perceval or is somewhere else or, or how I can determine which fields I don't want to be retrieving? Uh, so the, uh, those fields are, um, in the current implementation, they are, are coded uh, in Perceval. So if, if you want, we can go to GitHub. Uh, and I can see you, I mean, I can sh show you the, uh, the this, uh, these filters. Uh, so one of the backends implementing this is a meetup. 
because it contains sensitive information. So if we go here, uh, in classified fields, yes. Uh, so for uh, a, I mean, uh, for a technical uh, reason, uh, we decided to uh, hard coded them in the code because uh, uh, in this way we know what we are filtering out. Uh, so uh, what you see here is a list of lists, and basically every entry in the list is um, is an attribute that allows you to navigate through the uh, through the personal documents. So in this case, what we are filtering is uh, uh, the at the attribute topic that is inside groups. Okay, so maybe here like this is better. So then we are filtering out uh, event host and uh, RSVPs and values. And to activate this, you have just to uh, You have a parameter, actually, we can see it here, probably. So maybe we should, uh, no, here doesn't appear. Okay, but uh, in theory, if you just uh, uh, execute meetup with uh, filter uh, classified, I guess it, it should work. I, I can check for better the code if this is the right parameter. But in theory, is, uh, in this way, you are filtering out uh, the, the attributes that have been shown uh, before. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, okay then other questions? Yes, Andy, if you want to. Yes, uh, thank you very much. First of all, um, uh, I was able to install Percival while you were talking. That's that's uh, really cool. Uh, secondly, um, I'm curious, uh, how would I, uh, in, in, or do I need to, um, give a GitHub key to, to use the, the GitHub um, option of Percival? Okay, we, can, we can execute uh, Percival with GitHub if you want. No, do I do I need to supply a key or a token or or a login or anything like that? Well, in theory, uh, you don't need it. But if you don't uh, provide a key, then uh, you have just sixty petition per hour. So the process to retrieve data from GitHub will be really slow. In theory, you can. So, uh, so we can do like this: GitHub minus minus uh, So in this case, we have to. Um, uh, pass uh, just the okay yes uh, we have to pass the owner the repository and then as you can see the the API token is not uh, uh, is not a mandatory field in theory we can do like this so virtual GitHub so uh, we put for instance cows and again Grimor Lab uh, toolkit. Then uh, also we can we can execute it like this, and it should work because we are not going to consume all petitions. Uh, what is going to happen if uh, if you cannot? Uh, uh, I mean, if your if the number of petition is uh, it's over and you have to wait. So in this case, so we were able to retrieve all the data, so we have, we have no error. But at some point, you get the, you could get something like. Uh, um, a token, a number of uh, uh, number of uh, petitions like uh, exceeded. So you can do something like this. You add the slip for rate. So this com this um, parameter, what what it does is basically it sends the backend to to slip in case the the token uh, has expired, and then you should pass the API token. Uh, so. Token and uh, so uh, uh, I'm going to generate that token.
okay. And uh, for instance, we can target uh, maybe a bigger, a larger repository. So this will take uh, some time. Okay. The, the, does it answer your question or you need more, uh, you have more questions? No, 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 thank you very much. So if I could summarize, it's going to work without um, supplying a, a GitHub token, but it will be rate limited. And the rate limiting could, could um, apply to the frequency and the, and the size of request. Is that right? Uh, yes, basically, if you don't use a token, you, have, you are limited to 60 requests per hour. Uh, if you use a token, you have 5,000 requests per hour. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you use the flag, uh, sleep for rate, once uh, the, the requests are over, uh, I mean, the token will slip and then we'll, rest, and we'll uh, uh, restart the, the trivial uh, uh, automatically. So you have just to wait. That's awesome. And there is also another option. So in case of you have really large repositories, uh, you can pass a list of API tokens. Hmm. So this is something that we, we use for uh, uh, large repositories. So in theory, just API token, and so you, you pass another another token. And then uh, Percival does everything uh, under the root. So he will choose uh, the best token, and uh, if a token is expiring, he will take uh, another one. So this, this way should, yes, you, see, you can pass two tokens. So that's super nice. Is the is the rate limiting strictly uh, does it strictly relate to the frequency of calls or the size of the result that you get when you make a call? Um, in theory, uh, it's just in, in terms of uh, hours and petitions. So uh, your, the request, I mean, the, API, the, the issue you, you request, uh, there is no limit on this. In the sense is, uh, if, you are, if you are retrieving an issue, for instance, so uh, you don't have a limitation about the number of data, the amount of data you are downloading. It's just uh, a petition to the API. Okay. I'm curious, what is your strategy for regression tests of Percival? And I'm, I'm curious if you use some sort of a proxying strategy or if you have some way of caching your requests so that you don't need to hit the live API when doing regression tests. Uh, so for, for tests, what we do so, oh wait, let's so, so the test, uh, what we do is we mock the, the GitHub API using the HTTP practice. So we are not basically uh, issuing petition to, petition to the real API, but what we do is, uh, so we go, actually maybe it's better to do it uh, on GitHub. So in the folder test, oh, wait, okay. okay, the folder test. Uh, so here we have the test for GitHub. Okay, so we can focus just on one test. Uh, okay, let's suppose uh, that we are we want to test if we are uh, fetching uh, correctly the issues. So um, basically, the method uh, is uh, decorated with uh, with uh, this HD practice. So this means that uh, all the uh, calls uh, made to uh, all the HTTP calls can be mocked. Uh, in this case, what we are saying is uh, so we know that uh, the backend is going to to use this endpoint, for instance, GitHub issues URL. Uh, so what we do here is uh, we are mocking uh, the response of this uh, of this uh, URL, and we are uh, setting uh, the expected body. So and the body is generally loaded uh, is here. So if we go back and we go here, so we go to the folder GitHub, and uh, so this basically is a. Uh, is the out is I mean we copy the output from uh, from GitHub and then we use it just for testing. So, and does it answer your question? 
Thank you very much. It looks great. Um, another question I have is, are the regression tests easy to run? And if so, could you show us how to run the regression tests? Uh, yes, sure. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay. I'm trying to... Uh, I don't remember how to... And, and if it's not easy, by the way, yeah, no, no, it's okay. I was just trying to, um, to make the font bigger. Uh, I guess it's, I mean, I don't see the... Uh, okay. Like this is better, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, in the folder test, we have uh, a, a file that is called run test. Uh, so, uh, here we are using uh, uh, the unit test library. So, what, what the unit test library is basically is looking for all the files that start with test that are located in the folder test and execute them. So if we go, for instance, to, to GitHub, at the end of each file, we should have uh, a, a mail. So if, for instance, if you want to execute uh, this, uh, the test for GitHub, you have just to uh, run the file. Mm -hmm. And then you can, OK, in this case, we are, uh, so these are uh, the, is the execution of the test. And that's it. And we have the we know that we will run 57 tests in eight seconds. Then the other option is also to use uh, the library coverage if you want to see uh, how many lines of code you are not uh, I mean are not covered by your test. So in this case, I mean I don't know if you are familiar with PyCharm. I'm not. Okay. Uh, okay. In theory, to run the coverage, uh, you should install this package. Uh, coverage and then uh, just uh, launch it like this. So you are saying that uh, run uh, this file and just focus on uh, the results that are included in uh, in this package. Nice. So when you do this, basically what coverage does, so this is going to take some time because uh, we're going to execute uh, all the 800 tests we have. But then once, once this is done, you can execute the same package, but with a report. So with report, you will know the missing lines that are not covered by your test. Right. A quick question. The, the coverage yeah. package, is it a pipe package or a plugin for PyCharm? Uh, no, no, it's a, it's a standard package. Uh, it's not a plugin from PyCharm. OK, standard uh, Python package. Yes. OK, thank you. Uh, Mario, I mean, thank you. Thank you for okay. that demo. Okay, you are welcome. If you want, we can just wait uh, some maybe 20, 30 seconds and the test should be done. So then uh, we can check also the, the other script, the, the report. Uh, do you have other questions? I, I have one last question. Yes. And I, I have one comment. My comment is your code looks really, really nice. Really clean. And my last question is, um, in the output that you showed us, um, I noticed uh, there was data in the JSON that, that relates to files and commits. Uh, yes, but I did not notice any data in the JSON that relates to issues in the issue tracker. So I'm curious if, if that is supposed to be part of the output or or not, and, and how would I get at the issues if it's not? Okay, so um, uh, since we were extracting data from Git, the data was just about uh, mm. commits. Right, uh, right, right. If you execute GitHub, we get uh, information about issues. Then okay. the way to relate this, uh, I mean, is uh, we are basically not doing, uh, we are not relating uh, issues with uh, 
with it with commits, but is uh, is in the roadmap because ideally we would like to to check. Uh, so I can show you it. So I guess. So if we go back uh, again here, and uh, instead, so the default category is issues. So if we do category pull request, so should be this. Okay, so in this case, we are uh, extracting pull requests, and I, I guess if I'm not wrong, we should have the list of uh, uh, of commits. So in this way, we are we could be able to relate this information. But I'm not sure if this data is uh, final has been finally included uh, in the in the code base. Okay, yes, you see, I don't know if you see here a commit data. Yes. So this commit allows you to relate the, the pull request with the the commit the, the commit uh, extracted from Percival. So in theory, this is done at Percival level, but I don't think in the platform we have this kind of uh, uh, links. So in the dashboard, you, you are not able to see uh, this link. Right, Alberto. Yeah, in the dashboard, what you are going to see are links directly to GitHub. So you can access the issue or the pull request, the original issue or pull request. So from there, you can access the comments. But we are not relating the, the objects right now in the in the dashboard. We are considering different things, the commits and issues, and also pull requests. Uh, okay, just to, to close the parenthesis about uh, the test. Uh, so this was the coverage. So if we run the report, so this should take some time. But in theory, we are going to see, yes, this is the report. So for instance, we can, so these are the, the different backgrounds we have uh, in, uh, in Percival. And we can see, for instance, that uh, so Git is covered uh, around uh, I mean 94% and we have the lines that are not covered. So for instance, for this, we could write test and uh, to increase the test coverage. Uh, for other backgrounds like GitHub, groups IO, no, okay, GitHub is uh, 98, but for other backgrounds like uh, Jenkins and Jira, we have uh, 100%. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Thanks. And um, other questions? Because if you want, I can, uh, we can talk about uh, or the general structure of Percival or uh, I don't know, or whatever. Yes, I would like to know the, that general structure, please, if you can do that, go ahead. Okay. I will. Uh, okay, well, so there is a, a uh, research paper, I mean, about first, so we can maybe. Okay, so uh, I can share the link in the chat. Uh, so, so this is basically the structure of Percival, summarizing this figure. Okay. So um, basically the input of Percival uh, is a set of data sources. And in Percival we have three main actors that are the client, the backend and the command line. The output of Percival is a list of JSONs. So basically the JSON you, you saw uh, some minutes ago. Uh, so the backend is basically the orchestrator of the, of the collection of the fetching process. Uh, the backend receives the input from uh, the user 
and uh, orchestrate the, the fetching. So, for instance, uh, uh, there you can find uh, um, the kind of data we are going to retrieve. Uh, so, for instance, uh, uh, in GitHub, uh, you will see that we have um, we we fetch. I mean, we get issues from GitHub, and then inside the, every for every issues, what we do is uh, we uh, we call the API again to get the comments or to get uh, the reactions. Uh, so all the, the, the specificities of the API uh, are handled by the client. So the backend, what, uh, what it does is uh, uh, he is going to call the, the client uh, to tell him, like, uh, get me the issues. And then the client, uh, the client knows uh, how to query the API. So in this case, uh, it's GitHub, but then it does the same basically for, uh, for uh, all the other uh, data sources that Percival uh, uh, covers. So for instance, for Slack, uh, it queries the API. For Git, uh, uh, it's able to um, inspect the log. And then, uh, I mean, basically, we apply the same uh, idea to all the backends. The, the other um, component, I mean, the other actor, Ah, okay. Yes, sure. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know how to download the... I don't think you can share. I don't think you can share anything in Zoom. Ah, okay. I would send it uh, later, maybe to you, Matt, or I don't know. For Fine. Me, maybe. Yeah. Why don't you send it to me, and then I'll link it in this document. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. So then the other actor is the command line. So basically, uh, the command line uh, allows the user to execute Percival just from the terminal as we did instead of uh, uh, using a, a python uh, interface and uh, so in the in the paper you can see basically the steps we did how to install percival and then some simple executions uh, so we have uh, the section percival in action and here we are going to after we are go we, we here you can find basically the same information we commented uh, uh, before earlier I have a question. I have a question here. Yes. So it could be an easy answer or a long answer. So, um, do you when you're when you're doing this and you have all of your different data sources, it seems like some of the data might be very similar with each other from the different data sources. Just to, just in terms of how you might categorize that data, do you take time to try to bring those different data sources together under one one umbrella, or do you just keep them separate from one another? Um, explain more. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I am um, more or less I understood the question. So uh, the idea is uh, we try to uh, have like uh, deep, I mean we don't try to mix the data in Percival. So in okay. Percival, uh, so Git we get data from Git. GitHub we get data from GitHub. And then maybe in another step, we try to mix this data, as Alberto was commenting, for instance. You do or you don't? You do try to mix it? In a, but not in Percival. Maybe okay. in, a, in, a, in a next step. Yeah, uh, sorry for interrupting. The, yeah. the idea is uh, that the raw data should be something really, really similar to the information you have from the original API. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to check that you have the, the, the correct information downloaded. Yep. And then in later processes, what we have are different fields that allows to mix the data. But it's not a, a mix in the sense of having uh, several documents joined into a single one. It's more, than, uh, more like using a field, for instance, the author name, to get the information for all the documents corresponding to that also. And okay. in that scenario, well, sorting hat uh, yep. comes into play for helping. Okay, uh, for identity management. 
Yeah, that, that's the idea because the usual use case we have is you have an, a user and that user is going to contribute to different data sources and the, the community manager is interested in things like how many commits uh, they had, how many issues, how many pull requests or Slack messages or whatever. So the, the documents are different, but you need um, a field for joining them. So okay. that's the general idea. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, I guess part of it too is I could see there being kind of a general term of conversation that occurs across many, many different platforms. So there are obviously conversations that occur in Slack, conversations that occur in GitHub. Do you, when you talk about commits that might be clear to a platform, or you talk about the number of Slack messages, that's clearly unique to Slack. But it seems like there are some activities that could occur across many different platforms. So for example, like if I talk to Andy, I can talk to him via Zoom, I can talk to him via email, I can talk to him via Slack, and that's all just the communication that he and I have across these many different platforms. Do So do you try to bring those together? You know, like any conversation that Andy and I would have? Yeah, well, there are different use cases for that. Okay. Um, the, the short answer is yes. Okay. We try to do different things. Sometimes we need to split the information, which is just the, the opposite case. For instance, you're interested only in pull requests that were merged by people from uh, some organization. So yep. that is a, a specific thing that uh, needs some some tuning to, to get the information in the dashboard. And the, the other way around is that what you mentioned, is having all the information for any data source, any available data source, and then from all that information, you need to uh, start uh, aggregating data. For instance, uh, all the items that corresponds to a message in any kind of uh, item that could be considered as a conversation message or something like that. And well, we, we try to do things like that, but it is done on top of the enriched data. So it's in a really later process once you have all the information enriched and we usually need to analyze the particular use case and sometimes we need to add a specific fields to, to perform the join because well, in Elasticsearch, this is not like a SQL database. So yeah. for this kind of joins, we need a specific fields and we need to think about how we need to structure the, the information to be able to build a dashboard so in that that kind of metrics okay that's so, helpful thank you yeah maybe someday we can try to find a, a specific use case and try to build a dashboard to to achieve yeah, this. it sounds like these it sounds like this type of activity occurs further down the road when the data is either being managed by Sorting Hat from an identity perspective or there's an enrichment phase around the data? Sounds like these are a little bit down, down the road. Yeah, yeah. in fact, it's uh, after all of that. Once we have the information enriched, then we need to fight with uh, Kibana and Elasticsearch metrics and visualizations to find a way of aggregating the, the information. Okay, so that occurs in Kibana. Yeah, usually in Kibana, but sometimes we use directly Python for that. For instance, using Jupyter notebooks or things like that, or just Python scripts if, if needed. Okay, thanks. Just Welcome. to clarify a little bit the explanation by Alberto, basically we are enriched the raw data to produce data related with each data source, as, as you mentioned before, Matt. And the idea of using a similar, let's call it a data model, independent of the name of the data source. So basically, we, we have people that is managing issues, let's say like that. We have some issues management systems that basically people submit an issue, someone solves the issue, and they run through conversation around the issue. It doesn't matter if it's Jira or it's GitHub or it's GitLab or whatever. So basically, the, the data should be the same. And this is something we have discussed a lot in at least in, in the test of how we provide this to the people. And the mm -hmm. idea is 
you need to bill and richer to, to do that. So that mm -hmm. could be explained later. By, by now we are all only relying on the data source, uh, I mean on the information from the data source and then provide information on a specific use cases as Alberto has said. Okay. Um, in the time being, no one has requested this to be something agnostic from the uh, tooling that the community is using. It's basically, they want to know, okay, I want to know what's happening in GitHub, I want to know what's happening in Amistad. But they are not asking, as you said at the beginning, for example, how many conversations I have in my community. It doesn't matter where they are happening. It's just conversations, people talking to another people. The data model is as simple like that. Okay. And that can be another enriched, another enriched system on the current one. So that's how it would be uh, done programmatically, but it would take work. And I think it could be an interesting conversation if you are interested on, on, on working on that. Okay, that's good, thank you. Um, just a, just a little a, a note, we are five minutes away from the community call starting, so. I don't know if Valerio or Alberto, if you have like last things to say. Yeah, well, maybe just a final note on this conversation about how to aggregate data. Mm -hmm. In the easiest scenario, what you need to aggregate data is just having different uh, indexes in Elasticsearch. Then you can create an alias. An alias is a name to point to uh, different indexes. It can be one or several indexes. So you could have an alias for, for instance, all the Git and GitHub indexes you have in, Elast in, Elast in Elasticsearch. Sorry. And from that point of view, um, you can query that alias and stop counting things. So if all the items in those indexes can be aggregated just by uh, adding them, you can do it just with an alias. You don't need to add any other process to, to get the data. So for simple metrics, you can rely on this kind of, of solutions as we are currently doing for, for some cases. This all makes sense. This is very helpful. Thanks everybody for the description yeah. on this. By the way, all of these conversations helped me tremendously <laughs> understand Grimoire Lab in more detail. So I'm really thankful for all of you providing the time and I'm happy we can record them and share them too, so. Cool. We are glad to, to hear that because that's the, the idea of this session, so. All right. yeah, thank you for the feedback. I'm gonna drop off so I can get ready for the next meeting, okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, take care.